From pound pups like Jennifer Aniston's Lord Chesterfield to pedigrees like Seamus the Irish Wolfhound greeting Kate Middleton, all dogs come from somewhere, and often that somewhere is a commercial breeder. But not all commercial breeders are the same. Like any other businesses, there are great ones and others that cause great sadness, especially when new dog owners come home with a fur baby that is sick and sometimes even worse. People assume that USDA licensed dog dealers meet high standards. But a lot of new owners have been disappointed to find out their dog lived in substandard, sometimes shocking, and unhealthy conditions before finding a forever home. We're constantly rescuing dogs from commercial breeding. U.S. Senator Mark R. Warner has joined 23 other Democratic colleagues in sending a letter to U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Thomas Vilsack, urging him to update standards for commercial breeding facilities regulated under the Animal Welfare Act. The legislation would ensure dogs adequate housing, caging, feeding, watering, socialization, and veterinary cares. But you know, responsibilities of pet care are not only on commercial breeders, but also on pet parents. Los Angeles County Department of Animal Care and Control just issued its first ever unicorn license after a written request from a six-year-old girl. They sent young Madeline a license and a plush toy unicorn, but there were some conditions. If she can find a real unicorn, Madeline will have to give it regular access to sunlight, moonbeams, and rainbows, feed it watermelon once a week, and its horn must be polished at least once a month with a soft cloth. You're watching America's Top Experts.